Okay, so we just did a live video that I was observing and not in. And I got upset about what I thought was being portrayed in the video. So I had to, this is how we do things in this office. So I felt like I needed to talk to them about what is the stance on birth control. Because what I thought I heard in the video was that the benefits outweigh the risk. And it kind of sounded to me like everyone should be on birth control. We push birth control, which I know a lot of women get upset about because they feel like they go to the doctor. And they present with problems and the doctor says just get on birth control. The benefits outweigh the risks of not being on it. And that person says, well, that's not really what I came here for. And the doctor says, well, the benefits outweigh the risks. So you should be on birth control. But once we talked about it, I felt a lot better about what they were saying. And so I kind of, I know there are other hippies out there that watch our videos. And for all the hippies out there, I just wanted to clarify what you guys were saying the benefits were. So you were saying benefits. It may, so for women who are not on birth control but are found to be mutation carriers, BRAC1 and BRAC2, those are mutations that show increased, they have an increased risk of ovarian and breast cancer. The benefits of them getting on the birth control pill outweigh the risk they have with their, the breast cancer risk because it decreases their ovarian cancer risk. But for the average person without that increased ovarian cancer risk, we wouldn't tell them they have to be on the birth control pill to prevent ovarian cancer because their risk is already so low. Oh, when, you talk, when she talks about ovulation, so the theory, right, is, is that when you ovulate, there's stuff, right? There's damage, there's free radicals, there's inflammation, there's just stuff that goes on in the ovaries. So every time something happens, there's a chance that something can go wrong, right? You know me, I'm always back at the DNA. So if my little chromosomes have to divide and my new cells have to make be made and I have to go down that pathway, the chance of something affecting it in a negative way can happen. So that's where I think the theory of if you don't ovulate, the chance that you'll make a bad cell that could potentially head to cancer is down. Mm -hmm. And people with the BRAC mutation, remember the BRAC mutation, that is a, the BRAC is a stop codon. So as bad stuff's being made, BRAC gets up and goes, I don't think so, blow it up and send it back. So if you don't have that stop codon and you start down that road, your risk, your cancer genesis, if you will, will increase. So if you're on birth control pills, one of the reasonable positives is that it will protect against ovarian cancer. I think what our big issue is, I don't want anybody to have a problem and to be told, I have heavy periods, I have irregular bleeding, I don't feel good, I'm this and that, I have PCOS, okay, here's the pill, have a nice day. I don't think anybody was ever saying that. We want that fixed. I don't think, just like we talk about bioindividuality, nobody's black and white. I'll do, we've talked about PCOS, we're doing our 12 days of polycystic ovarian syndrome, and we've said a lot of people are told just go on the pill, we don't want that. But that doesn't mean I don't have a, we don't have a 25 or 30 year old polycystic ovarian syndrome young woman who's trying to eat right, exercise, do everything right, but she doesn't want what's called a Paragard. The Paragard doesn't have hormone in it, but you can bleed heavy, that's an IUD. So. Is it okay that she takes the pill? You know, yeah, we watch her and we want to give her freedom. So, and, and then we'll really be careful about saying, okay, watch the metabolization, all the estrogen metabolism yeah. I looked at. So I think, like you always tell us, there's no one size fits all. <laughs> right. And our, the, the panic of what happened back in 2002, you know, everybody threw their hormones out. Yeah, so. And so we just don't want that. And, 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 and if you look at, well, the Times said this, and the BBC's gonna say that, and the news said this, and poor women are standing there going, do I take it, do I not take it, do yeah. I take it, do I not take it? And I, I think the number one thing we wanna go is, okay, everybody just take a breath. You can, things you can do to be proactive should the pill work for your lifestyle contraceptive-wise are the things we talked about. And so contraceptive-wise, if I'm over 40, which huh, I know I am, I would think maybe a little bit harder about using the pill as my birth control option after 40 because it could increase my risk more than when I was 25. From Fair one enough. to, yeah. But I, would, but I would try to go off the pill over 40 because I would be at a point in my life, potentially if I didn't want another baby, that I wouldn't want to put more toxic estrogen in my mouth by mouth. Okay, so that's so my problem. That's, that's, yes. So birth control, estrogen by mouth is not optimal. So, so, but, but, you know, life is life. That's why I said, but it's, it's basically all we got as women. We put men on the moon, but this is what we got as far as our birth control that is reversible. So 
at 40, as your DNA is struggling and the DNA caps like we talked about last week are shortening, your ability of every enzyme to do its job goes down. So your whole system integration decreases. So the less I can put into my system that is going to have to work to detox the better. And number two, the less that I'm gonna shovel down a pathway that could potentially make a toxic, toxic substance the better. So yeah, I love everybody over 40 off the pill if we can find other options. But if it's working for you for birth mm -hmm. control, then that's fine. There, and, yeah, because there's multiple women over 40 that I've seen that are terrified of getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Right, And they is. refuse to get off the pill, so I mean, we just, this is to reassure them that their risk is not that much more. And maybe we can check your MTHFR, we can check your COMT, and we can start you on a B vitamin. So if you're a normal MTHFR and a COMT, not mutation, then you, you, you feel a little bit better. Or even if you don't check that, you're just getting back into your exercise. You're doing what you can to push the better pathway. Okay. And, and that's probably like in anything. Maximize your detox, maximize your sleep. So if you're estrogen dominant, and you're somebody that is really bleeding heavy because you're a bad estrogen offloader like we talked about in our other videos, yeah, I wouldn't go on the birth control pill to fix that problem because then I want to see you so I can help you detox, help get the estrogen out because then you're just pushing down that pathway worse. So everybody's individual, but, but the big key today was in this world of confusion, at least we can say, hey, take a step back, see who you are. And here's and, what the study actually said. And here's what the study okay, says. Okay, I'm, I'm good with that. I hope you're good with that. I hope I cleared that up. <laughs> see you next week. Bye.